With billions of hours of video content uploaded to YouTube daily, it is getting harder to get found on that platform. So today we're talking about how to properly use keywords when you are creating YouTube videos. Let's get right into it. If you're new here, my name is Liz and I help coaches and consultants add video to their business. Make sure that you subscribe so that you never miss any of my future content. Now I'm sure by now you've understood what SEO, search engine optimization and keywords are all about. I'm sure you have a general idea of the importance of them and the fact that once you start creating videos on any platform, you need to start caring about SEO and keyword research. So today we're not going to dive into the tools that you would use for that. That's in an upcoming video. But today is more of an elementary beginner step to that. Today, the whole point of the video is to give you an idea of where you are supposed to put your keywords, what is the whole concept behind them, and how you can use them to get found when you are posting videos to different platforms. So let's jump right in. Now, the main reason that you need to care about keywords in the first place is because typically people go to these different platforms and then start searching for topics. So when they search for topics, they of course are entering certain keywords. Think about the way that you use any of the platforms. You might go to the search engine at the top and type out a couple of words and then see what comes up. So this is what everybody does. So those are the words that we want to concentrate on so that your videos will also get found by people that are looking for them. When we talk about concepts of warm traffic and cold traffic and hot traffic, really what we are getting at there is people that are in your audience or in front of you that are somewhat interested in your content, completely cold to your content, or they are primed and positioned and ready to buy. The reason that keywords actually play a role in all of this is that when somebody goes to the YouTube search engine and types in a couple of words and then your video comes up and they watch it, that person is far more likely to turn into a warm and hot lead than someone who is just off the street that's bumped into your video randomly. This is one of the greatest benefits of YouTube because people are actively looking for things. Even if your video just comes up on the side in the suggested videos, that is still a great thing if somebody sees that out of the corner of their eye and then clicks on it and decides to watch it. Those people have gone out of their way to watch a video on a topic that they've already indicated they care about. That's why they typed it into the search engine. Isn't it so much better to put out videos that are being found by people who are looking for that content rather than just putting out videos into the universe and then just letting everyone in the world decide they may or may not watch it. So this is really what the relevance of keywords is. Now there are certain places where you need to add keywords that are going to help you get found when people are actually searching for those terms. So that's what we're talking about today. So let's talk about the first place. Now the most obvious place to enter your keywords is in the title of your video. And this would be the case no matter what platform you're on, to be honest with you. But on YouTube in particular, if it's in the title, it is really, really going to help to get picked up by their search engines. So that doesn't mean just putting the keywords in a random order and making it sound really clickbaity, like you're just prompting people to click on it, but that title itself has to be compelling and a reasonably accurate title as to what you are talking about. So sometimes when you scroll on YouTube, you can see people have created these titles where they have simply put the keywords somewhere and hope that people are going to actually click on it. People are far more savvy now and they can see through that stuff right away. So instead of that, think about a simple but accurate title for your video that includes the keyword in a very logically oriented way. You basically want to title your video in a way that a person might actually enter it into the YouTube search engine. So if you make it very convoluted and complex or something that's meant to be witty or clever, consider the fact that likely nobody is going to the YouTube search engine and putting in those terms. Instead, aim for clarity and keep it simple. Somewhere around five to eight words is really optimal for a title. Now, if there are a couple of keywords that you think are really relevant to your video, there's a few more things that we can do. So let's talk about that. The first thing is that you can add a couple of lines to your actual title and then just add another quick couple of words including the other keyword that you're thinking about. That way you can sort of maximize that real estate and you might be able to come up and search for people that are looking for either one of those very similar topics. Now don't forget for every YouTube video you do have some space underneath the video to enter your description. So this is another really important place where you need to have your keywords. 
Now, as we said with your title, you want your description also to be accurate and relevant and worded in a very logical way. It should be easy to read and give the viewer a really good comprehensive sense of what your video is about. So at all costs, avoid keyword stuffing. This is the concept where you are just shoving in a bunch of your keywords into the description, just hoping it'll get picked up. YouTube will absolutely give you a black strike if they notice that you are doing this and then you are risking having your entire channel shut down. Instead of that, focus on the first two to four lines of your description and aim to have your chosen keywords at least twice and then write that out in the most natural way so that when the viewer is reading it, they don't feel like they're just having your keywords shoved down their throat and instead they're just reading it in a really reasonable way and it seems to flow naturally. Another thing that you can do is enter those other keywords into the hashtags. So even in YouTube, you can use hashtags. It's not just for places like Instagram. So anywhere in your description, you can type a couple of the hashtags out and then that will just populate at the very top of that video once it's actually published. And that's another way that you can use keywords to get found in search. Now, another place where you can use keywords is within the tags of your YouTube video. Now, YouTube themselves have said that tags don't make the world's biggest difference. However, they have given us that space to work with, so there's no harm in actually adding some tags there. So that would be the right place where you think about other ways that your viewer might actually search for this topic of the video. Not everybody is necessarily going to think of that title the exact same way that you've created it. So try to mix and match a couple different ways just in case your viewer types that in, then there's a chance that your video could also come up there. Now in the past, I have made another video about how you can know the difference between keywords and tags. So look for that card here on the screen so that you can click and watch that one too. Now, one more place where you can add your keywords that not a lot of people think about is in the video file name. So believe it or not, YouTube can see and read the video file name that you use when you are uploading a video to that platform. So instead of having that weird name that's sometimes auto-generated when you create a new file, go out of your way to rename that with something that is as close to the title and keywords as possible. If you have multiple words there, then you can just separate that out with a hyphen and then upload it and publish to YouTube. Now, one more thing to keep in mind when you are using your keywords while shooting your video is that you should try to inject that keyword multiple times throughout the video content. Don't forget that YouTube behind the scenes is actually creating a transcript of your video. That's what makes it possible for them to generate the closed captioning subtitles at the bottom in case anyone presses that option when they're watching your video. So that means they have all the text of what it is that you are saying. So there is some different schools of thought as to whether YouTube uses that text to help to continue to move you along in the algorithm, but I think that there is some validity to it. When YouTube has that transcript, they are better able to understand what your video is actually about in order to continue to show it to other suggested audiences. So while you're shooting your video, make sure that you are adding in your actual keyword or keywords at multiple times throughout the video, just at very normal, logical, natural places, so that that just gets added to the transcript and then just helps to move you along in the keyword search. Now, as I mentioned, we do have another video coming up soon where I'm going to be showing you some of the tools that you can use for keyword research. But today, I'm just gonna show you very briefly how you can just use the YouTube search engine in general so that you can get started making videos. You know one thing that I say over and over, don't wait until you have every single tool and technique down pat before you start taking action. You can start making YouTube videos today once you are ready to face the camera and you have a topic to talk about. So today let's go into YouTube itself and see some of the different ways that we can start thinking about titles or topics of videos that you can make and you can get a better idea of how the keywords come into play there. So by now we all know how to go to YouTube and enter topics into the search engine so that we can find videos on the things that we are interested in. So your viewers are doing exactly the same thing. So that means if you want to make videos on certain topics related to your niche, but you're not totally sure what you should title those videos or what would be some relevant keywords, then just really start by thinking broadly about the topics that you want to make videos on. Let's say that you're an interior designer and your specialty is designing small apartments. Then you can simply go to the YouTube search engine and type things like how to design small apartments, how to decorate small apartments, furniture for small apartments. So once you start typing just general broader terms like this, 
Then of course, in the predictive text, you can see all these other suggestions come up. So the good news about this is that those are suggestions that real life human beings are actually typing into YouTube. They are not suggestions made by any robot somewhere. So this is good news because it means that these are topics that people are actually interested in. So as you see these different suggestions come up, that's your opportunity to ask yourself whether you know enough about those topics that you could also make a video about them. So that's one way you could do it. Another way that you could really easily do it is to enter what I call the wild card. So let's say that you have a general idea of a concept that you want to make a video about, but you're not totally sure what are all the different variations on that topic that people might be interested in. So when that's the case, go back to the search engine and type in that phrase, but leave a blank there so that YouTube can actually fill in that blank for you with some suggestions of what real life people are looking for. This is a really good way to just kind of open your mind and just expand the list of suggestions that come up for videos. There's no way that we can actually sit down and think of every single topic in the world that everyone might be looking at, looking for within our niche. However, we can actually get more inspiration and get more ideas and just trigger more thoughts when we start using this wildcard approach. Then you start looking through these and then again you're asking yourself whether you could possibly make a video on any one of these topics. So we're interrupting this video so that I can remind you to subscribe. I think you should do that first. And if you're interested in getting started with video, but you want to carve out a little bit of space at home to do that, make sure that you look in the description for the link so that I can send you a free resource and you can get going with that right away. Now let's get back to our video. Now the main reason we need to care about this topic of keyword research in the first place is so that you are, for one thing, making videos on topics that people care about and are actively searching for, and secondly, so that you are optimizing that video as much as you can so that there's a chance of it being seen. Think about how much time and effort it takes to create videos. You don't want to just put them out there if nobody cares about that topic or if no one is able to find your video. So this is really the reason why such a topic is important. Now with some of the tools that are available now, you can actually make this process a lot more seamless and it can help you to really hone down on some strong keywords that help you get found when people are searching for videos. So you don't have to go out and hire an SEO expert or do any of that stuff right in your early stages. Instead, focus on learning the tools, see how you can get your feet wet with actually getting some traction with video, and then think further about whether you'd like to outsource that. So if you like this video, I hope that you will give it a like and share it off with one of your friends. Don't forget to subscribe because every single week I bring you a new video teaching you how you can add video to your business. So until next time, take care.